Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of How We Make Things. Today we're going to be making this super bright and ridiculously cheap LED panel for your photos or films or even the occasional epic selfie. So before we jump into the build, I want to lay out three key features that I had to have in this light. The first one is voltage dimming. And uh, this is different from pulse width modulation in that it stays a constant light. There's no flickering, which is terrible for videos and photos. So I wanted it to have voltage dimming. The second key feature is the ability to tilt our light panel backwards or forwards to get a more dynamic lighting setup. And the third feature is a mount for my tripod so it can fit with my existing lighting setup. So let's dive into how this thing is made. So let's start with building the frame. We're going to need two 24 inch pieces and two 13.5 inch pieces to make the outside of the frame, the rigid part. We'll also need a clamp and some glue for the assembly. Using the corner clamp, clamp two of the sides together, then loosen one of the clamps and apply some glue to the end grain so that we can clamp it together and hold it in place. Once you've reclamped it with the glue, go ahead and shoot two or three nails into it to hold it in place while it dries. After that, you're going to take your 23 and 3 quarter inch by 14 and 1 quarter inch hardboard and run glue along the outside perimeter. Now let's dive into making the arms that will hold the LED panel. We'll need one nine and a quarter inch and one two inch piece for each side of the arms. We'll start off with the right arm, where we pre-drill a shallow indentation, and then with a five sixteenth inch bit, drill through both the two inch board and the nine and a quarter inch board. We'll then take a T-nut and hammer it in place. This will be used as the tensioner for the right side of our LED panel. After sinking our T-nut, we're going to apply some glue to the back of these two inch pieces so that we can adhere them to either side of the panel. These will be used as the standoffs for the pivoting points in the arms. You'll want to make sure and mark the halfway point on either side of the panel so that you center the two two inch pieces so that the arm mechanism will work properly. Go ahead and clamp those, leave them to dry, we'll work on the rest of the arm assembly. To start off with, we're going to need our two 9 and a quarter inch pieces and one 27 and 7 8 inch piece to act as the main arm holder. Go ahead and take away the LED panel because we're just going to be affixing these things at right angles. We'll repeat the process that we did at the beginning where we use glue and a corner clamp along with a few nails and let the glue dry in place. The glue and the nails add a lot of strength in and of themselves, but I added a steel angle to add some more support. I wasn't exactly sure how much flex I would be getting from the wood and I didn't want the nails to snap off or the wood to break. So it's up to you whether or not you'll add them. In retrospect, I would say it's a bit of overkill. Now that the arm is mostly assembled, fit it around the LED panel and attach the right side where we hammered in the T-nut previously. Then on the left side, clamp the board together and then drill in with a 5 16 inch bit all the way through to the inside of the LED panel. Then countersink it with a larger bit so that our screw will sit flush. Then we're going to make our tripod head mount. I'm using a half inch threaded piece of PVC which I found fit best around the tripod head. I went ahead and pre-drilled through the piece that was going to fit over the tripod head and then followed it up with a tap so that I could screw a screw through the front of it and create tension on the inside of the rod. Next we're going to create the housing for our piece of PVC. I used a piece of 10 inch pine that I had left over and drilled a hole large enough for the PVC to fit through it. Then I went ahead and added some glue to it and put it up against the base of our frame and used some clamps to hold it in place while it dried. Now apply some glue to the threads of the PVC and also apply some glue to the inside of the hole that we had created. Insert the PVC into the base of the hole and clamp it in place so that it can dry. This will take a long time to dry because you're not gluing wood to wood. While that was drying, I primed the entire thing. Waited for that to dry and then proceeded to drill two holes, one inch from the side and one inch from the top, at the top of our LED panel. These holes will be the portals for our positive and negative conduit that will run from the front of the panel where it will attach to our LEDs to the back of our panel where it will attach to our power supply. After the holes were drilled, I applied another coat of primer and painted the outside of the LED box a blue so it didn't look so bland. Next we need to cut our LED strands into smaller strips. 
Count out 10 of the contact points, which is equivalent to 30 LEDs, and cut. Make sure you're cutting on the part where it's marked to, otherwise the LED strips won't work. Peel away the adhesive cover on the back and apply them to the panel that we've made. Make sure that the LED strands are centered and following a straight line, otherwise you get a wave to them. If you follow your line and line them up side by side every time, and then when you're done, it'll look something like this. All straight lines and very professional looking. Now you'll need to cut two lengths of copper wire and lay them along the edges so that we can solder to them. But before we do that, we'll need to poke them through the holes that we drilled earlier and bend them so that they stay in place. Your panel should now have two copper wires on either side, feeding in through the top and running down the length of the LEDs. Now we need to tin the leads of all the LEDs. This means we need to apply a small amount of solder to the positive terminals on the right side of the panel and to the negative terminals on the left side of the panel. Then we can take our stripped wire and make an electrical connection from the points we just tinned to the positive side on the right side of the panel and from the points that we tend to the negative side on the left side of the panel. As the big copper bus is much larger than the smaller wires, we need to make sure that we heat it up properly, otherwise we'll end up with issues like this. Where most of the panel will light up, but a few strands won't because they're not connected properly. Go back through and re-solder the ones that don't work, and then when you test it again, all the lights should work just like this. Make sure and test it in several places to make sure the LEDs work all the way around. Let's take a look at the circuit that will allow us to do the voltage dimming. Here is a voltage regulator and a potentiometer. These two in conjunction will be used to do the voltage regulation. We need the potentiometer so that we can manually adjust the voltage output. But we need to do a few tweaks first to make sure that we don't accidentally over voltage the LED circuit. To assemble the circuit, start off by soldering some short leads onto the middle and left potentiometer leads. Then we're going to flip it upside down and solder these two leads onto the potentiometers on the voltage regulator. The middle one from the potentiometer will go to the middle one on the voltage regulator, and the right one on the potentiometer will go to the right one. Next, we need to check our voltage output to make sure that it's giving us the proper voltage. We don't want more than 12 volts on the output, otherwise we'll ruin some of our LED panels. So in order to do this, we're going to turn our potentiometer all the way to the right to see what its maximum voltage is. Then we're going to adjust it back a little bit. Now on the top potentiometer, you're going to turn it to the left, or counterclockwise, to decrease the voltage output. Again, turn your potentiometer up to the top and see if it goes to 12 volts. Now we wanted to turn the potentiometer clockwise until it reaches a 12 volt output. As soon as it reaches 12 volts, stop turning. Otherwise, we can damage the LEDs if we overvoltage them. Now that we see the 12 volt maximum, we can turn the potentiometer to see what the actual voltage range, and we notice that it goes from almost 1 volt all the way up to 12 volts. Now we got the electrical side of this circuit worked out, I went ahead and made a small housing in which to place it, where the potentiometer would stick out the front so I could turn it. I inserted a small fan to control the heat and a switch so that I could turn it off and on. This is all just extra icing on the cake, so if you want to do it, you can. Next, we need to connect the negative on the output to the negative side of our LED panel and the positive from our voltage regulator output to the positive on our LED panel. I heat shrink both of these to protect the lead so they didn't short on anything. Now all that's left to do is finish assembling the armature that will allow us to tilt the LED panel. I made a custom handle for the right side where the tensioner is going to be. The tensioner works by screwing into the tina that's attached to the LED panel itself which in turn will clamp the armature down around the LED panel and hold it in place due to friction. I used an inch long hollow aluminum tube to house the screw so that as the LED panel pivoted, it pivoted nicely. For the left side of the panel, we just need to insert the screw from the inside and then apply two nuts, one so that it will hold it in place and tension it, and the second one to lock the first one in place so it doesn't come undone as we pivot the panel over and over again. And that's it, you're finally ready to use your new lighting system. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you liked what we did here today, then go ahead and subscribe and like it. 
share it. I'm so happy to share these projects with you and we're gonna have more coming your way anywhere from drones to tree bookshelves to coffee stands. So stay tuned for some more awesome things.